this morning and to hear me and to pray with me and not only pray with me but also learn from me may the good God bless you thank you for the many response that I'm receiving and thank you for your masses and your faithfulness and thank you even for standing with the masses of God concerning the nation of Kenya and being faithful to stand in the gap for the nation of Kenya and even to learn from me. May God bless you and do you good and may God fill your baskets always in Jesus name. Now today I am done with uh, how to you, uh, the topic of how uh, do you know that uh, you are in bondage of an evil altar. Today I want us now to do the finals. Why uh, people visit evil altars? Why? The reason why people visit evil altars this is what we are going to learn. When you go to Numbers 22, we shall dwell most, we shall dwell mostly in Numbers 22, 23, and even we are going to go to Judges, if God allows me, where Gideon made a no fight, or a God, and allowed the Israelites to visit and to inquire from it. And also, we are also going to look at Exodus, where the Bible says that, and they made a brazen serpent, are they not the serpent? Of course, they made a god. And that is where all cultic started officially. That is where it started when Aaron and when the Israelites lifted a, bar, a, 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 a bull, you see, a bull. That is where all cultic started. The Egyptians had it, of course, but the Israelites, that is where it started. 
and also the snake, the serpent, the bruised serpent. When God gave an instruction that it should be lifted up, and when Moses died, the Bible says, and the children in the in Second Kings, the Bible says that, and the Israelites continued to worship that idol until it was destroyed in the time of one of the kings. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want us to look in Numbers 22. And this one, I always teach it when I'm talking to people about their families. Who do you entertain in your home? Who do you entertain in your business? Who do you entertain even in your family and in your daily works? Because what or whoever you entertain will determine your strength will determine your, your, your going forward, will determine who you will become. Amen? Now, Numbers 22, I want us to look in verses 4. It is quite big, but uh, let me read from verses 1. I will not read all of it. The Bible says, And the, Lord, the children of Israel sent forward, uh, set forward the pea and pitched in the plains of Moab on, their side, Jordan, on this side Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak the son of Zepho saw all that Israel had done uh, to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, now shall this, uh, now shall this company lick up, in other words, defeat us in battle, lick up all that are around about us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zebo was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers therefore to Balaam the son of Boa to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, and to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they are bind opposite me. Now, verse 6, and from verses 6 to 7 is where I want us to concentrate on. Come now, therefore, I pray you, curse me, these people, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall prevail that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. And the elders of Moabites and the each and the elders of Midian departed from the from the uh, from the rewards of divination. In other words, they departed with fees, with fortune, money, with payments. You see, in their hand, and they came to Balaam and spoke to him the words of Barak. And he said to them, "Lord, here this night, and I will bring you word again." as the Lord shall speak to me, and the princes of Moab are bound in Bala, with Bala. Look at verse 9. And God came to Balaam and said, What are these with you? What, are, what men are these with you? Verses 6 and verses 8 and verses 9 is where I want us to look at. Number 1, he said, Cast for me, cast for me, because they are mighty. Number two, the Bible says, they came to lodge in the house of Balaam. Who is that living with you? Who is that doing business with you? Out of deliverance ministry, I have learned something. It is not everybody that comes in your house. It is not everybody that sleeps in your house. It is not everybody that comes to see you or to visit you or to do business with you. There are people who come and when they come, they defile and they become attack to your life. Now, the Bible says in verses 8, and he said to them, lodge here this night. I cannot tell my enemies to lodge in my house. I cannot tell witches to sleep in my house. I cannot tell div diviners to sleep in my house. We have family members who drink, who smoke, who do a lot of things. You will say, these are my brother, let them come, let them smoke. It is okay. No. In your house, who is that? And I will bring you the word again. Now, when you look in verse 9, the Bible says, And God came to Bala. God came to Bala. And God said, What men are these with you? It was a rebuke. 
who is this? Who are they? Balaam was like under a spell to me because how can God rebuke you over people and you are still, still doing divination? You are still doing cursing. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when, when we are, I'm going to give you so many of them. When you look in Numbers 23, why do people visit evil altars? Why? What is the reason? We have read, curse for me, you see? Cast for me, you see, cast for, for me. I have so many enemies, cast them for me. So there are people who go because they want their enemies to be destroyed. And there are people who go so that they can know what is happening. Fortune telling. The Bible says they looked, they went with a fortune fee. Amen. Now, 23, the Bible is talking about the same thing. And Balaam said to Balak, build me here seven altars, prepare me here seven oxen and seven rats, you see. He wanted to raise an altar so that he can be able to curse the children of Israel. Continue reading that scripture so that I can be able to teach many others. Now, number one, number one, why do people visit evil altars? Many people have been asking me, Apostle, Teach us on how to lift altars. I have spoken to you many times. Raising altar. You raise an altar with a sacrifice. And at the end of it, I will be doing three prayers. Now from this scripture, from this, why do people visit evil altars? I'll be doing three prayer points so that you can learn how to destroy altars. There are prayers you pray and scriptures. And there is raising an altar by sacrifice. Judges chapter 6, the Bible says 25 and 26, and Balaam was told, uh, and, and Gideon was told by God to destroy the altar of his father. And he raised, he destroyed it. He, before he destroyed the altar, he raised an altar. He gave a sacrifice so that what you have destroyed will not fight you back. And after destroying the sacrifice, the altar, he was told, slaughter another bull of your father. He raised another sacrifice to raise an altar. Praise the name. It is sacrifice. It is money. It is If you bring me a hundred cows, where will I take those cows? I cannot open a butchery. I cannot take them to the slaughterhouse. It is your money. Your money will help me, you know, buy church plot. Your money will help me help the misfortune. Your money will help me do ministry. Amen. So the first one, the first one, the first reason why many people visit evil altars is to discover people's destinies and waste them. People want to know, people want to destroy, people want to kill. When they design you are going far, they will go to inquire so that they can be able to destroy your destiny, so that they can waste you. Many people's destiny have been wasted. You have documents in the house, you don't use them. Or if you use them, they are not helping you, they are not even benefiting you. So number one, the reason why people visit evil altars, it is to discover people's destinies and waste them. Balaam was put there to go see and curse the children of Israel, but they were not cast. They were not uh, cast. There are people who will see a happy marriage. They will go to evil altars just to destroy that marriage. There are people who will destroy your marriage or your children or even destroy your womb that you will never carry babies. You have gotten married, okay, congratulations, but in this marriage you will never give birth to children. They will discover your destiny and waste you, make you wasted. You see people that are learned, they are just wasted. Either they are wasted in drugs, drinking, prostitution, sickness, madness, you see, those are things that one must be careful. Number two, the reason why they discover, they visit evil altars, evil people of course, it is to afflict, oppress, and destroy people's stars. Look at that. They come to afflict, they come to oppress, and to destroy people's stars. I've dealt with the stars, I've dealt with the stars, and Dealing with the stars is the hardest thing, but when God gives you grace, you are able to deal with it. When we go to Genesis chapter 38, 
Genesis chapter 37. Let's do 37. Genesis chapter 37. And, uh, this young man was able to have a dream. Uh, uh, Joseph had dreams. And he spoke his dreams out to his father, even to his parents, and even to his brothers. And he was able to speak to them, but they didn't like it. In fact, even the father one time told him, Do you want to tell me that I too will bow? at your knee you see so there are things god will speak to us people will discover stars they will discover stars and they wanted to kill him in genesis 38 the bible says that and they took this boy they took the boy uh, 37 sorry the bible says in verse 33 32 and they sent the coat of many colors and brought it to their father after what after they have sold him after they have sold him Verses 27, the first thing they wanted to do is to kill him. They dug a pit, they dipped him inside. Reuben said, no, this is our brother. Let us sell him. The Bible says, verse 27, come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Praise the name of the living God. Then there passed the Midianites, Merchants, and they drew, uh, uh, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Look at here, twenty pieces. Look at Jesus. They Judas just got thirty pieces. These other boys, they just got twenty pieces. Let me tell you, people don't give much money many times to kill. In Embu, when we lift our banners for the conferences, they used to come and cut them, take them to witches overnight. And one time the Lord revealed to me that these are young men and they are paid 200 shillings. And when I prayed and I told the church that, after two weeks, the boys came. And they said, Apostle, we want to see you. I said, okay, let me take you somewhere for lunch. We went to a very good hotel in Embu County because I didn't want them to be seen and I also wanted to treat them well so that they can pour out what they have. And they say that they are the ones that removes my banners, they pull them out, they pull down my banners, they pull down my, my, my posters so that they can be able to take them to witches. And when they take to witches, ask them how much do you are you paid? They said only 200 shillings. And I'm like, me, I cannot die. I'm not a chicken. And that is where this phrase of parable came in chariots of fire. I cannot die like a chicken. Praise the name of the Lord. And they, they wanted to kill me because of 200 shillings. There are people who are paid even 5,000 to kill you, 70,000 to kill you, you see? So there is, they, when the enemy wants to deal with your star, they can kill you. They can bring sicknesses. They can even make sure there is no money that you can go to school. They can even disgrace you that nobody will favor you. Glory be to God. Stars are very important. Joseph was a star. Look at what happened. But as the star was sold, the Bible says they helped God. Look at that. These people helped God in their foolishness. They assisted God to drive this boy to his destiny. Glory be to God. Stars are very important. When you read in Judges, let's go to Judges and chapter 5. Judges chapter 5, look at the way Sicilia or Cicera, Cicera was destroyed. Verses 20, they fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Cicera. The stars, it is not the stars we see in the heavenly that fight, no. Of course they fight. I see the spiritual realm when God was giving me the heavens, when I was fighting with the heavens and I saw the stars. It was a very, very, very interesting, maybe one day I'll speak on that, but it was a very interesting vision that I saw. Stars all over. Some were brighter, others were darker. They were still bright, but not bright. They had names. Even here in Embu when I'm doing deliverance, God would open my eyes and I'll see big stars and I'll see it put in position and that star will start producing the, 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 the waters, the springs of water. Even when I went to Teso, before I went, I saw the same thing. The Bible says, the kings, look at that, 
the kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan. Look at that. Chapter 9, verses 19. Chapter 5, Judges. The kings came, not king. The kings came and fought. They then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanash by the rivers of Medico, Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. In other words, the battle was fought by great people. Praise the name of the Lord. The stars in their courses, the stars, the kings, the stars in their ranks, in their position, they fought against Sisera. Glory be to God. We are stars. There are people who shine brighter and there are people who don't shine brighter. They don't shine bright, but they all have that way. We have the mass. We have Jupiter, we have, I don't, you, you know all of them, you know all those stars, amen? So they will afflict, they afflict, they afflict your life, they afflict, they destroy, they, they gossip, they can gossip against you so that you don't succeed. They can fast against you, they can pray against you, they can take you to a witch and say, I don't want this person to succeed. I don't want this person to take the position. I want the mind of this child to enter into the mind of my child. I want this. Star. I've seen it. People operating in chariots of fire, we pray and say, anybody using my star to gain for themselves, to gain blessings, to gain favor, to gain prosperity, to benefit themselves, today return my star. Return my star. Let my star fight against you. Those are prayers you pray, my friend. They oppress. The enemy can take you to evil altar to oppress you. Every day sickness. When you go to the hospital, there is no sickness being found. You see? You are always on medication. Your blood is running too fast. You see? They can, they can even oppress your marriage. They can oppress you through your children. They can oppress you through your, your, your boss. Oppression comes in form of sicknesses, poverty, you know them all, and destroy people's star. When your star is destroyed, you cannot shine your shine. And that is why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, let us go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 18. The Bible says that. Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 18. The Bible says that. Uh, but the path of the just is the is the is as the shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. Proverbs 4 verses 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. You are supposed to shine more and more, but the devil has darkened your star. The devil has stolen. Your star is what you can do best. Your star is what you can do But Let's go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah and chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 16. Your star, if you can sing well, there is one song in you that will blow, will make everybody and will make everybody like you, will make you favored. And you find you are dormant. You, are, you sing, nobody hears your music. Well. Nobody likes your music. It is not nice. You see? But the song is very nice. Sometimes it's business. You have a touch of something. That touch, it can be selling socks. It can be selling panties. It can be selling costumes. It can be selling uh, cosmetics. It can be salon, just having one hairstyle. It can be just selling wigs. It can be selling shoes. It can be anything in your business. It can be selling potatoes. It can be even distributing food stuff to schools. You find that your star have been tampered with. Zechariah 9 and verse 16, the Bible says, And the Lord, and the Lord their God shall serve, shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown. Lifted up as the uh, as the banner in his hand look at that the stones of your crown we have people that have crowns but their stones have been tampered with the crown is not beautified i can give you scriptures scriptures over that isaiah chapter 60 isaiah chapter 62 
I can give you scriptures on that until you see. For Zion's sake, verse 1, will I not hold my peace? For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness therefore go forth as brightness and the salvation therefore as the lamb that burns. This is something, this is a very nice. When you look verse 3, you shall also be a crown of glory in the hands of the Lord and a royal diadem, a royal turban in the hand of your God, a royal turban, a royal crown, a royal diadem. Glory be to God. That is why the devil will tamper with your destiny so that he can waste you. Number three, number three, the reason why evil people will visit the altar, evil altar, or the reason why people visit evil altars is because they want to influence people to take wrong decisions. They want to influence you to take wrong decisions. Wrong decision in marriage, wrong decision in family, wrong decision in career, wrong decision in your studies. Because the moment you mess, the moment you mess, let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. The moment you mess with your direction, my friend, you have lost it all. You have lost it all, your direction. You, <laughs> chapter 30, verses 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk you in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. There is also another scripture in Isaiah. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 7. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 7. That says the Lord God, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. When your direction is diverted, or when your direction is, is hijacked, you have to pray such prayers. Asking and telling God that it shall not happen. Whatever I have missed, but it shall not happen. When you look in verses 11, ask thee, and this is what I want before we tackle for number 7, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depths or in the height above. Ask thee a sign of the Lord. Ask thee a sign of the Lord. Ask thee a sign of the Lord. Before you take any initiative to do something, before you take any direction, before I am like that, before I do anything, I ask God, even if it will take years, I ask God, ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it either in depth or in the height above. When you start asking God direction, you find yourself succeeding. There are so many, many of them, maybe I can give you next time, there are so many of them, so many of them, I will not give you those others. There are so many of the scriptures, you ask direction, you receive it, you ask direction and you receive it. If you don't receive instructions from God, you perish. We read it in the morning, Psalms 19. Psalms 19 and verses 18. Uh, Psalms 19 and verses 11. If you don't ask direction from God, you will mess up. You will not succeed. The Bible says that, Psalms 19, 11. Moreover by them is your servant want. Directions are given by God. Instructions are given by God so that you can be warned. For me, I wanted to take law. I wanted to take law. I wanted to study law. I think I'll be very strict lawyer and God-fearing lawyer. And uh, there are courses I wouldn't have taken like murder cases, abortion, divorce cases. I would not have taken them because I'm a pastor. But even if I was not able to do it, I prayed. I entered into music, I sang, you see, I made music, but God called me and said, I have called you to minister, I have called you to preach, I have called you to deliver. So it is good to pray for direction, because when you miss direction, the enemy will mislead you. The Bible says, and in keeping them, there is great reward. In keeping instruction, there is great reward. When you read in Proverbs chapter 5, verses 25, 23, he shall die without instruction. 
if you don't have instruction, if you don't have direction, then you will not be able to succeed in life. You will be influenced. Now, number three, influence people to take wrong decisions. There are people who are doctors, but that is not what you are called to do. Even as parents, we can instruct our children. We can give them the wrong career. You say, you know, this is what you can take. In our family, we are all nurses, or we are all doctors, or we are all teachers, or we are all pastors. I tell my husband, and my husband tells me, that our children, we shall not tell them to be pastors or ministers of the gospel. We shall pray over their lives to enter into what God has called them. And of course, God has revealed to us. There are people that are supposed to be good, good uh, supporters of the gospel, but they are in bar. They are doing bar work. They, they are doing it. The enemy has diverted their destiny to selling beer, to doing prostitution, to doing other things instead of standing in the gap. So they take you to evil places, evil altars, so that they can influence people to take wrong directions. We have people who fear God, suddenly they start doing prostitution. We have people who have never drunk beer, but suddenly they started drinking beer, and it has ruined their lives. Amen. Even in your marriage, is the husband or the wife you are married to, the spouse in your life, are they from God? Because marriage has two, they have two, it has two mind, two wheels or two minds. One, the mind of God and always is the best and many of us don't like it and there is the mind of man. You love this person, you want this person, you cannot do without them, you get married, your will brings you problems, but the mind of God, even when the enemy touches, God will always fight for us. Number four, I will do two and then we call it a day. Number four, it captures people's progress and destroys it. Your progress, your progress, hey, your progress, you are progressing so far, so fast, and your enemies are annoyed. Why is this business running very fast? When I came to Embu, when I just came to Embu, I came the first month, I came in 2007, the month of March, the last week of the month. And uh, the first week, I didn't have many people in my meetings. We were like 14 of us. I came the next meeting, we went half. The third meeting, oh, oh, it was mind-blowing attendance. Oh, oh, people were even, the fourth month, people were out. Outside, you couldn't find a place to go to the toilets. In fact, I used to hire white seats, okay. Hey, problem started. My battles is a battle of many people. The first ones that started, of course, it is the stray is the stranger, the strange power, the powers of the land. The powers of the land fought me. Words that we are spoken against the strangers in this land, they started fighting me. Number two, pastors. I don't think there is any pastor, and I'm sorry if there is one that have not fought me. I'm very sorry to say that. When I came, when I came, some gathered, some fasted for 21 days, chain fasting with their churches. How do I know? People came and confessed after God revealed to me. They fasted for 21 days. That was the biggest fasting that time that hit me badly. So the 21 fasting, it is a pastor will call for 10 people, five skillful intercessors who know how to pray. And you know their prayers are not with the word. It is, oh my God. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they went to the mountain. I will not say where, but one of the prayer mountain, one of the prayer, prayer homes here. And uh, they fasted, led by their chairman. They fasted 21 days. They even took a paper. I'm saying it so that they can know I know. They took a paper and wrote my name, my family. They wrote my assignment. They wrote church plot. That's why we took time. We are taking time, but this year we are getting because we have breakthrough. You see, they wrote, they, they cast us, they burned, that is witchcraft. They burned the paper, mixed it with the soil, and then scattered it. It was so bad. I did not know how to deal with it. And on the, the, on the, the last day of their fasting, 21 day, 
the Lord spoke to me, I paid the whole for that meeting. I obeyed, I paid and I left for Nakuru. Some people called me on Sunday and they said, Oh, Apostle Pray, I said, what? In fact, many people and also one bishop called me and I knew where this one I have to take initiative. And they started by saying, we have come to bury one of us. And they mentioned my name. So the bishop ran away, called me. The other bishop that told me later on stayed and said, maybe I'm the next one. After three months, I had a very bad accident that killed everybody apart from four of us. Three of us that had come to end, God rescued us. And one man that was working with the government that buried the wife, buried the daughter, the twins 11 days, and buried the mother-in-law. Praise the name of the Lord. God kept us. They have fasted, witches, people going to witches. They even fasted another one that eight days that almost destroyed us. But our father dealt with it. So I can talk and talk how people, Christians, can fight you. Some will even say you are Masonic. Some would stand on the altar and say, Apostle Damaris is wicked. Apostle Damaris is from the ocean. Don't go to that church. That is how progress is stopped. My friend, the progress was stopped. I started again alone until God showed me mercy. And this time I'm coming in crashes, but I started alone, traveling from Nakuru up to M. Every month, one week, crippled. Alone, alone, that is how it can be stopped. People can stop your business. You are running too fast. Your business, customers, 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 it can be stopped. You are progress in achievement. You have built a house, you have bought a car, you have released an Oh, we are dealing with it, amen. I'm dealing with one of the gospel singers, the Lord spoke to me, uh, uh, Jimmy Gate, I'm dealing with it. What is happening in the throat is not normal. I wish he can come and deliver him. It's not normal. It is, a, it is what I'm talking about. Amen, amen, amen. But God will show him mercy. I know what I saw. Hallelujah. So many of these gospel singers, God has been revealing to me about it. It's not normal, but God will show them mercy. So the enemy can stop your progress and destroy it. They just stop your progress and they destroy it. Your education, your child just drops out of school, out of nowhere. They don't go more to school, you see. They have entered into drugs or they have entered into guns or they have just... Your, your children are just telling you they are in school. You are just paying fee. You are just paying fee. At the end of it, there is nothing to answer. There is nothing. Amen. There is nothing. Number five. Why do people visit evil altars? To bury promising, to bury, they bury, they bury promises of great people. They bury your promises. They bury your greatness. They bury your life. They bury, you know, they bury. They can bury. They bury. I don't need to explain how they bury, but they can perform funeral. Sometimes God will tell me to go to the border, to go to Chuka, the, between Embu County and Meru County, the border. I would go there. The, I don't know the boundary. I don't know. I would go up to there. And when I go there, I'm just praying and God will open my eyes. And I will see coffins. They are put next to the river. Coffins and crosses. You see coffins. And that place always accidents. But we dealt with it. We just destroyed the coffins by fire. We burnt them with real life fire. And we made a covenant with that place. So God has always revealed to us a lot of things. That's how they bury. They can bury you in a coffin. They can bury you even in their small bottles. They can bury you under the waters. They can bury your promises, write them down, throw them into the ocean throw them into the river. At times I will go to that river to pray for that altar. The Lord will just tell me, go and pour oil on that river and release those that are bound. And sometimes I will go and enter into the water and I will find bottles with the names of people. And my protocol will break removing, physically removing, and will name them by names, release their destiny, releasing their marriages. 
others are wires and the strings have been tied having their names and we are able to deal with it. But now I don't go there because that was a level. The next level now God gave me angels and angels are the ones that I assign those places to perform it for me in Jesus' name. So people can bury your wedding ring, they can put it in a pot, put it, put your hair, and you know it's not every hair. They can put your hair, the glory, the nails, they can put your rings, your documents, your clothes, they just need a small piece of your cloth, and then they bury it, they dig, bury the pot and cover. My friend, your destiny is covered. You don't even dream. You don't, even documents, important documents, title deeds, they are also done the same. They can even write your name and put there. That's why in Chariots of Fire we pray and we tell God, anybody that has buried my destiny, anybody that has buried my marriage, anybody that has buried my documents, I bury you in the name of Jesus. We pray such prayers because we know what happens. Amen. So you have to be careful in Jesus' name. I want us next Sunday, I will deal with number six and number seven, eight, and nine, but I want us to deal with evil altars. I want us to pray. And uh, we are going to do two prayer points only so that I can be able to teach you on how to pray. And one of the prayer we are going to pray is, I normally use my my father, my father. That is the that is my signature. That is not even signature. This is my strength. This is me. This is me. It is me. My father, my father. This is my God. When I say my father, my father, he must appear. Why? I know him as a father. We are going to pray. My father, my father. I'll give you. My father, my father. Any altar speaking against me, any altar speaking, any evil altar speaking against my life, so you will repeat it after me in Jesus' name. My Father, my Father, any evil altar that is speaking against my life, that is speaking against my marriage, that is speaking against my children, that is speaking against my family, that is speaking against my career, what are you waiting for? Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Every evil altar that is making my name, that is mentioning my name, that is having my name, that is having my name, that is having my cause to destroy my life, to destroy my family. Monday de Bozaga da Brosia. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Catch fire in the name of Jesus. Maragadala Basia de Bandala Besia Turabagai. Evil altars that are affecting my life, that are having my name, that are mentioning my name. Maragade de Bosiada. Catch fire from the roots. 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 Maragada Rabasia de. Sharabandere bosia dabe, maragadere bosia sabe, sharabanda la besa kada, bandele gende de bosi kada be, shege de bosia sabe, bandala bande de bosi kidiya, bande de bonde de bonzi kidiba, shere gende le gende le gende, maya tada besia dabe. Shoroko, Taraba, Segede, Brosia, Taiba, Rombade, Bayatada, evil altars, having my names, having the names of my children, having the names of my spouse, having the names of my career, having the names in my documents, having the names of my household, having the names of my location, having the names of my siblings. What are you doing? Haya, Todo Brosiada. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Sharagada rabasia de, maragade rebosia de. In Jesus' name we pray. And the number two prayer. We are going to pray against any sermon. Remember they summon you before they do it. And we are going to you, we are going to pray this prayer very well. My father, my father, any person summoning me in my dreams, in my vision out of my dreams, out of my vision, to destroy me, to learn and know who I am. Today, 
die in the name of Jesus. Anybody monitoring you must die. That's how we kill them. And we have, me, yeah, I'm licensed to kill in the spiritual realm. The Bible says that do not suffer which to? Mm -hmm. To live. Numbers 23, 23. My father, my father, any witch, any sorcerer, any evil person, someone in my name, someone in my spirit, to destroy my life, to destroy my family, to destroy my life, to destroy my children, to destroy my career. What are you waiting for? Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus. Mara koto robosi, shege de prositi badia, banda la ganda na bezia, and the witch someone in my name, and the witch someone in my spirit, and the dev karabo city ba, bendere gonda de bozia, on the dry land, in the waters, in the heavenlies, die by fire, die in the name of Jesus, die in the name of Jesus, die in the name of Jesus. Die in the name of Jesus, I kill you tonight. Kayata Dabe, Zondo de Bosa, Shende de Bosiada, Bende de Bondo Bosi, Shende de Bondo de Bosi, Mayata da Bando, Sende de Bosia Turubosa, every witch and the witch that is someone in my name, that is someone in my assignment, Karabosa Taba, die, 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 die. Let your gadgets that you are using to summon you be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. Karabo city ba, baraga dere bosiada, baraga dere bosiada. In Jesus' name we pray. We have two more minutes. We are going to tell God any gadgets they are using to summon you. They can use mirror to call your name. Let it break. I've seen it. They can use water. They can use your image, your picture, anything they are using to summon you. Let it catch fire. Let it be broken. And let fire answer them in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God. My God, I proceed. My Father, my Father. Any gadget witches are used. Any gadget they are using as a point of contact to summon me into their cover. I command it to be answered by fire. Let fire answer it in Jesus' name. Let fire answer it in Jesus' name. Let fire answer it in Jesus' name. Be broken by fire. 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 Shaga dara baga. Shaga dara baga. Shaga dara baga. Shaga dara baga. Bande de gondo do gondo do boza. Shenge de dembo city badia. They broken. They broken. They broken. They broken. Shaga dara basia de. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. You will continue. I'm just showing you even as we pray. I want to pray for you that wants to receive Jesus Christ. I repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner, write my name in the book of life, destroy the book of judgment, and make me your own today, in Jesus' name. You that have accepted Jesus, may God watch over you, may God keep you, may God sustain you, may God give you a shepherd that you will be pastured in green pastures, you will be taken to green pastures, and you will be shepherd in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want to pray for you viewer that is watching me, and praying with me and learning with me this year may God show you mercy may the faithfulness of the Lord become your portion may God show you his faithfulness and according to the word of God in, in, in Proverbs chapter 4 verses 18 that the light over the the parts of a righteous man are as a light that burneth day and day even to the perfect day may God shower you with the grace May your stars shine, may your paths be clear and not darkness, and may God lead you 
even as a shepherd leads his people to greener pastures and refreshing oil and may God make a table before you in the presence of your enemy for you in the presence of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ thank you so much for tuning in please subscribe and please share my messages so that somebody else can be blessed continue supporting me continue praying for me and God will bless you richly in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you